Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Experience Kills. I am your host and with me today is Cameron. Hey Cam. Hi Cam. I mean Ben. Wow dude. Okay, it's only Monday. So you're doing well at the start of the week there buddy. Doing beautiful. <laughs> you you forgot who you were and also who I was? I mean... Well, who needs to know who they really are? Well, I can tell you one thing. In Lawnsword, Corrin Lankar, he knows who he is, and he is a commander of men. The kind of guy you need as a hero to sort out the baddies from the good and to murder as many evil foes as possible. Yeah, okay, he's got that down. I'll give you that one. He has got that down. Uh, And that is what we are here to talk about today, which is... uh, I'm just going to call it Lawnsword from here on in. And, uh, yeah, we we looked at this back in June, uh, me and Richard, on PC in Early Access... Uh, so please, by all means, go back and look at that video. But I'm going to probably um, go over some of the same things we did in that video as well. Because not a lot has changed since we looked at the early access of the game. Obviously, it's finished now. Um, but when we looked at it in early access, the kind of the core mechanics and stuff like that, they, they are still the same. And what we commented on back then, uh, interestingly, Cam, was that we really thought this is a RTS that will be perfect on a console because of the way it controls. And uh, the reason for that is it's kind of this isometric pullback top-down view that you just control uh, Corrin himself on the battlefield and then you sort of give commands to other units in a way I would describe as Pikmin-esque. Now, did you ever play Pikmin on the Nintendo consoles? I was... You should know this by now. I was always growing up the Sony side of things. I'm sorry. I just let you down. <laughs> it's okay, but you know Pikmin, yeah? You know I, what no, it was. Um, yeah, little little kind of impy-like creatures, weren't they? So the reason it's like that is Pikmin and Lawnsword is all about small uh, unit tactics. So by that I mean, you know, you're running around the battlefield, uh, and it is this this game is sort of a hybrid of a few genres. But the first one I'll talk about is this Pikmin mechanic, where you can grab uh, a bunch of like the different units uh, and sort of bring them with you. And then when you go to another p- place on the on the map, uh, say a pet area you need to defend or attack, you then release the units to like fight in that area. So you're kind of like dragging them around with you and deploying them because your character himself is isn't that strong he's all about sort of leading the forces into battle uh, and that kind of goes hand in hand with another one of the kind of genres that's mixed up here in this game and that's tower defense so you're also putting down uh, towers which can either be defensive or can be spawning units and then that comes into the third type of game that comes into uh, play here in Lawn Sword, which is the MOBA so these towers that are spawning u- units will then deploy the units on set paths much like you'd see with ads in a MOBA So it kind of all comes together to be a very console friendly experience because it's tower defense which works really well on console, it's that Pikmin mechanic for controlling the units and then it's those MOBA mechanics in which a lot of the units can just be automated in their attack routes anyway and then you know your deployment of units will then just augment those forces already. So it actually is quite unique which is something I really appreciate about Lord Sword. That's actually sounds quite incredible. Um, From well, because what I've read they said they designed it from well I quote designed from the ground up to be played best with a controller yeah 100% it it didn't it doesn't work really on mouse and keyboard at all um, when I was playing it on PC, I was playing it with control because that's where I was told it was the best way of playing it before giving a look at it. And 100%, it's all designed for that. You know, there's the triggers or how you grab the units and deploy them. Um, Sorry, so, so even on the PC, they said use a controller. Yep, that's, that's right. A- that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of makes it... It was kind of weird to me that it was debuting on PC in that regard because it's like, well, if it's all about the controller, why haven't you gone straight to console in, in yeah. one of the early access things on, say, Xbox? But, you know, that's the way they did it, uh, and that's how they got word out about the game. And, you know, one of the big, one of the only real downsides about this game, because it's got unique controls, unique gameplay, uh, the setting is pretty cool, the story is kind of very serious fantasy, so it's kind of like Game of Thrones, and there's machinations of, of different political forces at play, and you're kind of swept up on it, and all you really care about is protecting your family uh, and your homeland, but you kind of get drawn into this conflict. Um, and that's really good, but one of the downsides is... There's a clear visual downgrade that's happened here for the consoles. Uh, It looks a lot less sharp, basically a lot lower res in the textures, which I'm guessing is to make sure it was playable and ran at a good frame frame rate across all the now myriads of iterations of PS4 and Xbox One that we have out there. But it is a bit unfortunate because 
there, there's a sort of a, almost voxel-esque look to the graphics, uh, especially the terrain. For example, the snow and the desert, which when you go through it, uh, you and your units all leave paths behind them, all leave like trails in the in the gra on the ground. And on console, everything just looks a lot muddier and a lot sort of fuzzier, so it's not as clear. And because of the way the camera works and you're so far pulled back, that your character, he's always in the center of the screen, which means you can usually locate him. But when a big fat, sort of a big battle goes off and he's caught in the middle of lots of units, good luck in actually being able to visually differentiate Corrin from everyone else because you just can't. Uh, and that makes things a bit chaotic and not always the best when you're trying to keep a guy alive who isn't really that strong in a battle. But is there some, uh, is there like an in uh, per level, like level up system for Corrin then? Uh, no, so. One, the, the main sort of upgrade mechanics come around the towers so when you sort of you build like um, a foundation for a tower and then you can decide what you want that sort of building to be um, by all being constant context sensitive sort of spots around the the base of the uh, foundation as you walk around so you can go oh i want this to spawn melee units i want this to spawn ranged units i want this to be uh, a healing area i want this to be a magic spawning area that kind of thing and mm. you can basically decide all of that there's no menu it's all in game and con contextual so that makes it really friendly to that console sort of idea again and the controller so you're not trying to go into radial menus menus as you often would in an rts or yeah. page through multiple screens Screens, everything is happening very immediately and that and that that's kind of the MOBA influence I thought very much so and it's a is there kind of um uh, like a resource sort of gathering mechanic is that part of like a well those kind of RTS games as yes well, so it's it's somewhat um, simplified there's only a couple of resources which is food and money uh, so you're mining you can mine like gold and stuff like that to get it out of the ground to like um, bolster your treasury and then food is just like farms and stuff and it's just food it's not you know four different types of food a la Age of Empires or whatever so things are definitely simplified in those regards yeah yeah last, last thing you need is a, is a vegan only army in this sort of day and age isn't it uh... well it's all too <laughs> likely nowadays frankly isn't it but yeah n none of that in uh, in uh, the lawn sword the winter chronicles and whatever fantasy place that Corrin finds himself i couldn't tell you the name of the place off the top of my head but uh you know it's an interesting little game i like this it's come it's from a studio called tower five i like the fact that it's this mashup of these three distinct sort of genres of game the tower defense the moba and the rts and it's been made very much with a console in mind which means while there's been actually recently loads of really good um, ports of RTSs and management type games onto console, they've all really kind of had to think about uh, a lot to do with how to bring those controls and interfaces into a controller sort of um, area, you know, and that can be quite tricky and doesn't always work. Sometimes it requires a lot of sort of fiddliness. Whereas with this, from the ground up, it feels incredibly accessible and easy to do. It's just a shame that the graphics and the fidelity are, are just so hurt in this port they just don't look anywhere near as sharp as it did on PC and like I said that can make gameplay a little bit difficult because it's sometimes hard to work out uh, where Coron is and if you've watched any video cam you can see that the game isn't exactly the best looker it's fine but it's not like ridiculous so the downgrade I'm not really sure why we've seen such a downgrade I'm really not it seems unneeded especially with how powerful like X you know this is standard um was it the 1S you had on or was it uh, just a uh... So I've tested this on my S and my X, yeah, and there's no improvement on the X. Oh, so that, see, that just seems disappointing, doesn't it? It's, yeah, a little bit. While they've got available, they should be able to do something, yeah, at least uh, keep the, yeah, at least keep the quality, you know, from uh, PC over to Xbox. I, um, I don't know if it's like a problem with hardware, maybe moving it over, if that would have been the problem, but it is a basic looking game. It doesn't look like it needs like everything to be running full steam ahead to power the entire game does it no i, I don't think so i've seen i've seen some rts's and uh, management games things like frostpunk which came across recently to console and that's far more visually uh, impressive than this and it doesn't really see much of a downgrade in visual fidelity to it during that port all I can think of is maybe Tower 5, uh, a smaller studio, an independent studio. They probably didn't have a huge amount of funding. I, I don't know if this port was done in-house or farmed outside. Um, so it's very hard to say what the, the sort of the details behind this are. I, I don't think it should put you off from playing this game. I think the game is quite unique, like I've said. And if you're in the mood uh, for sort of a serious fantasy set game, which has got these 
very different mechanics in it and is built from the ground up to work with a controller i think launch of the winter chronicle you know is a fun experience so yeah i'd, I'd give it a recommendation yeah well done <laughs> well done indeed well done yeah no, well i don't done. mean it in a, in a depressing way but no no I mean, <laughs> it does actually I'm, I'm a big fan of my rts games I, yeah. I really am i've played them from like empire earth to age of empires all the uh Back when the the mythological DLC came on a separate disc back in the old days, yeah, no <laughs> no downloadable DLC for me. I had to go out and buy it uh, or get was, it on a magazine. Or on a magazine, yes. Yeah. Um, good old days. And, so I'm a big fan, and that you know, it's the sort of um, the style that I'd probably be more interested in than I. Yeah. So uh, I'd say it's the end of another episode of Experience Kills. I've been your host Ben, and with me today has been Cam. I hope you've had a fun time being here, Cam. Heard about our new game. I love new games. Yay, I love new games. <laughs> Always <laughs> excited for a new game. We will be back soon with uh, more content as always. Please make sure you give us a like and subscribe. That is all we ask. I don't have a Patreon to promote. I don't have a PayPal link to promote. I'm not begging you for anything like that. So just a like and subscribe. That's literally all we ask. And you could also follow us on Twitter. You can find me at DIYE. You can find Cam at Camelot. And you can find Experience Kills at Experience Kills, strangely enough. Uh, yeah. Please bear in mind as well that there are audio versions available for all of these videos if you don't have time to sit and watch your youtube video you can i don't know listen to the podcast on the train or at the gym or you know whatever you like to do that with your podcasts uh, on the shitter if you like how about that here i was trying not to be crass this entire episode and you just end it on that <laughs> well you know i can't go a whole episode without being crass that's just not possible um like i said we'll be back soon have a good one bye bye bye